Hello. Now in this session today, we will be taking something new again in quadratic equations. I mean, the topic is actually quite familiar to you. You feel what could be there again new in quadratic equations. But there is something which you can learn. If you have already noticed that kind of thing before, then good. But otherwise, this would be something new to you, I guess. Let us start with common roots of two quadratic equations. I don't know how many of you had thought about this, that can two quadratic equations have same root or equal roots or common roots. Now, when you read this common roots of two quadratic equations, now what do you think that there could be one common root also or there could be two common roots also, right? So I can have two equations, say a1x square plus b1x plus c1 equal to zero and other equation I have taken as a2x square plus b2x plus c2 equal to zero. See, I could have started this by taking some example also. But I personally feel that when I have to introduce you something, then it should be in the form of ABC, etc. I mean, some general standard expressions we should write there. So A1, B1, C1, etc. Don't get perturbed by those names, A1, B1, C1. If you wish, parallelly, you can take paper and pencil. You write in place of A1, B1, C1 some coefficients and proceed. Exactly on the same lines, what do I do here? Fine. Now, when these two equations can have common root, my claim is that any linear combination of these two equations will take you to one equation which is satisfied by that common root. This is a standard result in algebra. If that is the case, then what should I do? First of all, before I proceed, how many of you know what I mean by linear combination. Linear combination means you multiply that first equation by some constant, multiply second equation by some constant, say k1 and k2, and then k1 times first equation plus k2 times second equation equal to zero. That would be a new equation, which is linear combination of those two equations. Linear combination means multiply those two equations by two constants and add them. That is called linear combination. If that is the thing, that linear combinations resulting equation also gets satisfied by the common root, then can't you feel that if I eliminate term x square from both equations, for that what I will have to do? I will have to multiply, say, by first equation by a2 and second equation by a1 to eliminate terms of x square, I may have to subtract also, correct? So multiply first equation by a2 and second equation by a1 and subtract one from other so that that x square term will vanish. Now I have arrived at that third equation and that is b1 a2 minus a1 b2 times x plus c1 a2 minus c2 a1 equal to 0. Mind you please don't get perturbed because of that a1 b1. In actual problem they would be replaced by some numbers. So that particular expression would look good. To you. Now, this is a linear equation and linear equation can have only one root. Are you getting me what I am saying? This is a linear equation and linear equation will have one root. And on the other hand, I am claiming since it is a combination equation, so this will get satisfied by the common root. So, put those two things together and what do you realize? That common root should be nothing but the root what you get on solving this equation 3. And if I solve this equation, I will get x equal to c1 a2 minus c2 a1 upon a1 b2 minus b1 a2. That is what I get x as. And then I claim that this x cannot be different from the common root. So my final claim is that common root is nothing but this. What did we do in the entire process? We eliminated term of x square from both the equations. This is how we can attack at common root. Now, can you think that there could be some other case also, that both the roots are common? If that is the thing, then one equation must be nothing but multiple of other. Means a1 upon a2 must be same as b1 upon b2 must be same as c1 upon c2. That is what I mean by one equation would be multiple of other. Generally, this second case, no one would ask. First case is important. Now, let us take some example so that things would be more clearer to you. Here I am given two equations, 2x square plus 3x plus 5 
gamma equal to 0 and x square plus 2x plus 3 gamma equal to 0, they have a non-zero common root. And we want to know what is value of gamma and then we have four options. Now, if I have to start with this, one procedure could be go methodical. That you say that there is a common root A, suppose, and other root is B. Something like that we can start with. So, I take first equation, 2x square plus 3x plus 5 gamma equal to 0. And I say, one root is A, other root is B. I can talk about some of the roots. I can write their product of the roots also. I mean, from the given information, minus B upon A, C upon A. I hope you remember that. I write second equation also, that is x square plus 2x plus 3 gamma equal to 0. Now, while taking its roots, one root I will keep the common one. And the common one I am taking as A suppose, then I will say this will have two roots A and C. I am not taking B equal to C, right? So, I will have some of the roots, product of the roots. I have gathered information about A, B and C. And they are in terms of gamma. So, in all we have four equations and we have four unknowns. A, B, C and gamma. Now, our job is to get answer for gamma. So, one way is that you solve for A, B, C, gamma, four equations, four unknowns. Now, how you start, that could be your choice. But I did it something like this, that I will divide A, B by A, C, so that it will lead to B upon C. That means B in terms of C, I can write. And then if required, I will replace that B in A plus B equal to minus 3 by 2. And I try further solving and I get that it is nothing but 6a plus 5c equal to minus 9. I am trying to get information which would lead to answers for a, b, c, etc. And also, since a plus c is minus 2, if I take 6 times this, 6a plus 6c would be minus 12. And I have one equation 6a plus 6c equal to minus 12. Another one is 6a plus 5c equal to minus 9. Now, this can give me answer for c. And c is minus 3. At least one unknown is known to me. Now, B also you can find from here if you wish. I can find A also from here. Now, I have written A equal to 1 by substituting in one of the equations value of C and I get A equal to 1. Now, either you write AC equal to 3 gamma. Now, since A and C both are known to me, so I get gamma as minus 1. Other part or other way could have been that if you have understood that common root is A, then A equal to 1 must satisfy those two equations. Substitute in any of the equations, given equations, and arrive at value of gamma. And even that will lead to gamma equal to minus 1. I hope this method is understood by you, that you start with one common root as A, other non-common ones as B and C, and then proceed, write some of the roots, product of the roots, etc. Let us revisit. Answer is minus 1, fine. But let us revisit the question and think, do we have any other method to solve this? My intuition says that I mentioned some time back that it is the combination equation which you can write and that will be satisfied by the common root. If that is the thing, then Aliter we can use. Aliter means some other method. And I say I would start with now linear combination. And linear combination when I am attacking, I write one equation as same. 2x square plus 3x plus 5 gamma equal to 0. And other equation is x square plus 2x plus 3 gamma equal to 0. I multiply second equation by 2 and subtract from the first. Means I am taking linear combination. And by doing this, I get straight away one linear equation. That is x in terms of x. And I arrive at x equal to minus gamma, which is the common root. And if I substitute x equal to minus gamma, the common root in any one of those equations, I will arrive at actually answer for gamma. And those two values what I get for gamma by doing this are 0 and minus 1. Now, it is already mentioned in the problem that a non-zero common root means gamma equal to 0 would be rejected and we would arrive at gamma equal to minus 1. See, in competitive examinations, many times what happens, either you get stuck because of not knowing formulae or you solve also. But then while picking up to out of two answers, the correct one, you may get fumbled. But understand, please, if you read a question carefully, you should know which is to be picked up and which is to be left out. So here I choose gamma equal to minus one because non-zero common root was expected. I think this illustration is good enough for you to understand that how do we deal with common root thing. Next time when I come with something new, 
Till then, stay tuned. Keep practicing. Thank you.